Hello, welcome to Lightkeeper, a horror visual novel developed by Smile Straw Bunny, available on itch.io. And well, I played a few games from this developer, um, and you know they're pretty good. So I want to check this one out as well. I do believe um, it, it was also in collaboration with Kathinka, I, I think. Uh, but yeah, apparently we are going to be exploring some kind of lighthouse and I guess we'll see what happens. I guess a little content warning as well. You know, this game is tagged as horror, so it may contain some disturbing content. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's begin. Let's wake up, apparently. Last thing I remember feeling was a cold, clawed hand gripping a hold of my face. Seeing something move within the shadows, just barely out of my peripheral, uh, bleh, I can't say that word, peripheral, peripheral vision. It was that, then, my vision was shrouded in darkness. Darkness is rare in the kingdom of Lumion. Apparently there's a kingdom. However, I'm not in Lumion anymore, am I? The kingdom of light never had a heavy, humid air like the atmosphere of wherever I am. The castle never felt this cold. You arose from the bed in your cell, pondering your new predicament. Something tight was claps around your throat. You could feel it tugging you back the moment you try to stand up. A chain? No way. Was I taken? In prison? The metal around your neck was firm, but your eyes trailed down to the chain it was attached to. The cracks in the wall indicated that Wherever you were, it was quite old. This could be to your benefit, if your suspicions were correct. As the princess, of course, you were trained exactly what to do should a situation like this happen, you know, as every princess is trained to do. Ah, yes, you know, stay put and wait to be rescued, for help will always find you, in the form of, like, a plumber, you know, like a red shirt, you know, and goes like, Yahoo! It's a me, Mario. Uh, I can't just stay put. There has to be something I can do other than just sit here helplessly. You gathered your strength, trying to conjure a bit of light to get a better view of your surroundings. Nothing. Huh? You felt weak, drained. The magic you had feels limited now. A dizzy, numbing sensation coursed through your mind, spreading to your fingertips. Whatever you did, it seemed you would have to make do without magic for now. Focusing on it only made you more feeble. Perhaps wearing out the chain link first would be the best course of action. Do you want to break the chain? Um, you know, even though we're in a rush to like get out of here, maybe we should follow the rules of uh of being a princess. You know, this is what we learned in princess school. I think I don't know. Also, I don't know if it matters. Can you, like, break chains? That's that's really tough, isn't it? It's, like, literally made out of metal. It's like that meme, you know? I can break these cuffs. You can't break those cuffs. Um, I guess we'll just stay put. Say no. Nah. That's okay. No. Trying to break free might only anger my captor. I don't want to do that. Who knows what might happen if I do? You release your grip on your chain, sighing as you turn your head to observe your surroundings once more. You couldn't move much, but the room was small enough. You could look at a few things nearby. I suppose I might as well look around the room while I wait to find out my fate. You gain a trait, obedience. What is this? Princess maker? You know? But let's see, uh, this game's also point-click as well, I've heard. Or at least not heard, I read actually on the store page. It says point link, so you have to click on stuff. It's also made in RPG Maker, it seems like. So it's like visual novel slash point click, but it made in RPG Maker. It's a interesting combination. Uh, a chandelier, I can't, I can't speak. A chandelier gently sways overhead, emanating a dim light around the room. You admire the aesthetic silently. There's not much there. More things that are barely out of your reach. You had never felt so restricted before. Helpless. Weak. Your worries only increase the longer you think about your predicament. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to save. Oh, here you go, you can save here. Why is there like <laughs> slashing sounds? It's not very encouraging. 
Also, her name is Elizabeth, apparently. We have 450 HP. Bed? The bed you woke up from suddenly. You have no recollection of how you got here, nor how long you've been here. However, one thing was certain. As long as you've remained in this room, there wasn't much you could do to pass the time. You thought more on how comfortable the bed was, given the situation. It was tempting you, like cheese in a mousetrap. You could indulge, or you could reconsider po the possibility of breaking through the chains. He didn't look very strong. Worst comes to worst, you could always say it broke on its own. That's okay, let's take a nap. <laughs> nah, who cares? You know, we have we have shelter, it's fine. As long as, as long as our captor feeds us, I guess we won't die, at least. <laughs> I don't know. You give in, resting your head against the pillow once more. You know, you don't have to pay rent. It's great. <laughs> As you close your eyes, your mind swirls in confusion trying to wrap your head around the situation. Where were you? What would be your fate in the cell? Would you rot alone here for the rest of your days? You didn't know. You were putting a lot of faith in your captor being merciful, yet your gut told you it was the right thing to do. The chain on your neck made it difficult to truly relax, but you managed to fall asleep all the same. A creaking noise filled the room, startling you awake. It was still dark outside. You presumed it was still very late into the night. Your eyes scanned the room, but it didn't take long before you noticed the figure peering in through the open doorway. He stared down at you silently, watching, waiting. You recognized her attire being the same as the woman in the painting although she was much more intimidating up close and personal. She took one step forward towards her bedside, then another. Her movements were slow and calculating, as if she were analyzing each one of your shaky breaths. Soon, she was hovering over you. You noticed her hand twitching. It was something that reminded you she was a living creature and not a menacing statue or a figure made up to scare children in the night. Oh, here's the light keeper, the titular light keeper. Um, she was just she's animated, which is interesting. She's animated scars, and she reminds me a little bit of like that anime. What was it called? You know, the the anime with the uh, gem anime girls or whatever. You know, it's, that's just what it reminds me because the giant gem in her forehead. But it's not exactly. I guess those characters are made, literally made out of gems. Anyway. You're shaking. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> huh? Nani? You're stuttering now, too. Poor thing. You really must be frightened after all. A low chuckle escaped the woman's lips. The connotations rang loud and clear. Fake sympathy. Fake pity. You start to sit up, however. You're or rather... Oh, oh, I read that wrong. You start to sit up, however. Your movements freeze when you see the tall woman outstretch her arms in a commanding way. Stay down. She spoke in an authoritative tone, flexing her fingertips with the sharpest nails you've ever seen. So, uh, author, I, 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 said, I said that word wrong. Authoritative? Authoritative? Uh, authoritative? It was reminiscent of a predator bearing its claws. You hesitate for a moment before slowly lowering yourself back down on the bed. Good girl. She inched closer towards you, her hands less tense, but an authoritative aura still lingered thick in the air around her. Do as I say, and I will ensure no harm comes to you. Her hand gripped the chain hanging from your neck, pulling your face up close to hers. Understood. What was this? I don't know, but this just reminds me of Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know. Anyway, um, I mean, I guess, I guess we do. You know, our our trait is obedience, so I guess we're just gonna nod. Not. You nodded, staring right up at her over a nervous expression. Yes, understood. Very good. Such a sweet, frightened little thing. You've been so compliant so far. Don't worry. Nothing will ever so much as harm a hair on that pretty little head of yours. You know, this is not what every villain says. Right before 
sacrificing, you know, or attempting to sacrifice their victim to like demons or something. A familiar cold hand gently grab a hold of your face. Oh, oh, that's just an ending. Obedience. And now we're just her weird roommate, you know, forever. It's fine. At least, do we get fed at least? Get free food? Uh, as long as we have internet, <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, all right, let's uh, try to break the chains this time. Press the right keys before the time runs out. Key to E. Uh, ooh, e, ooh, e, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, ah. Good thing I'm a QTE master. Played many Project Diva songs. Uh, yeah. As the link of the chains break, you still find the shackle around your neck to be completely unmovable. Oh. At the very least, you could now walk around the room you were shut inside of. Well, let's see. Since now we can move, let's look, look around some more. Let's look at this. A journal of some sorts laid on the edge of the window. Looking at it, you notice it had writings about the upkeep of the place you were locked inside of. Why is this here? Does this room belong to the keeper of the lighthouse? You scan through the notebook for anything that could prove useful to you. Attempt number 13, a magical security system. Repairs to the old magical generator have proven successful. We managed to power them using crystals collected from the depths of Lumion's sacred mines. My servants had implemented an emergency security override successfully last night, testing these crystals. I ordered them to hide them for the time being among the lighthouse. You read further, hearing details describing what this security override could do. It seemed that you would be able to strengthen the security or completely disable it if you collect three of those crystals and hook them up to the generator. Oh yes, a fetch quest. Interesting. I suppose my best chance of survival would be to track down these crystals to gain access to the security. But where could they be? Where or where could they be? Let's look at this. Looking upwards, you see a painting of a dark figure above your bed. A fabric draped over the face, yet you still recognize the woman in the painting. After all, you've heard countless stories about her. Her scars were deep enough to show the most tainted magic hiding beneath her scaly exterior. An aura of intimidation strikes through your heart vigorously. Kin of Dragon, Reaper of Enlightened Souls, the Lightkeeper. 1,000 year old, you know, Dragon Girl. Uh, she's been causing problems all throughout Lumion since as long as you can remember. She must have taken me. But why? Is it for power over my kingdom or. Look at the window. You could smell the salt water scent of the sea from your bed. That scent towards the only window in the room. An endless dark sea greets you. Light appears to be circling around the building, parting through the thick fog every few moments. Looking down, you realize your prison must be towards the top of a tall tower. A lighthouse, most likely. There are sharp, jagged rocks decorating the base of the lighthouse below. They almost look like a natural defense mechanism to keep anything unwanted out. How did I even get here? Did I really stay asleep through a trip by sea? Look at the candle. The candlelight flicker is being one of the only senses of warmth and light filling the room. Seeing as you're powerless, keeping a light source close by may prove useful. Do you want to take the candle with you? Sure. Why not? Clutching the candle holder tightly, you feel the slimmest sense of comfort being able to see more of your surroundings. You got candlestick. I guess uh, let's interact with the door. You jiggle the handle of the door. Fully expecting it to be locked, you found yourself pleasantly surprised to hear a click. The rusted door creaked so loudly, it made the rest of the room feel definitely silent by comparison. Or def definitely? However, after a few moments of the quiet lingering, you feel it's safe to move on past your enclosure. Do you want to leave the room? Sure. The silence was replaced by the sounds of your unsteady steps tapping against the cold ground. Upon walking into the room, you felt a chill run down your spine. Or rather, crawl down your spine. The tingling sensation felt like something small had gotten into your clothes, exploring your skin in ways most discomforting. 
The tiny little legs creep their way down your torso and towards your ankles. An unbearable itch spread across your leg as the crawling continued. The longer it went on, the more you felt like there were multiple insects clamming around you rather than just one. Why are there like bugs? What's going on? Look at your leg. Grabbing the hem of your nightgown, you find, or, or rather, you grabbing the hem of your nightgown, you are expecting to see a sea of beady eyes and microscopic limbs decorate your ankles. You anxiously pull up to take a look. Nothing. Not a single ant, spider, or centipede. Nothing was present on your legs to give a clue as to what you were feeling moments before. How strange. <laughs> Isn't that like... I feel like it's a symptom, I think. Of like something? I'm probably remembering it wrong, but like, isn't that like, you know, cause a sensation of like something crawling up your skin? Isn't that like uh, a symptom for like, like drugs or some sort, you know, like if you're high on drugs or something? I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Let's look at these bugs in the cases. Uh, you see an array of pink bugs in display cases decorate the walls. You feel pity for the beautiful creatures. At least their beauty would not go to waste, even in death. For a moment, you ponder how you would feel if your dead body was used as a decoration. Honored. Mm, I feel horrified. How terrifying to have yourself tampered with such, in such a way that you become a display piece. These poor creatures. Can I look at this? A glass casing like the other ones decorating the wall. However, instead of a pin insect residing inside, you found yourself staring at a brilliant crystal. One of the crystals needed for your plan. The glass casing appears to be stuck. No matter how you try to pry it open, it doesn't budge. It appears to have no other choice. I have to find something to break it open. A pity. I quite like these glass cases. Let's see, you can look at the shelf. Looking in the drawers, you find an array of tools that look like they were made for vivisections, as well as various food meant for insects and other animals. Nothing that seemed useful to you yet. Hmm, can I look at this? You approach the closet door of caution. There was a small note above it, though it was written in a draconic language you weren't well versed in. Judging by the way the handwriting was scratched on, you surmise it was an important note. A warning. Your hand grips the cold knob of the closet door, taking extra care to make minimal noise when turning it. You still weren't sure what could be lurking among the lighthouse after all. Slowly, carefully, your eyes were overwhelmed with the sight of twenty or so different kinds of bugs, all of them swarming, crawling, and hopping around different parts of the closet, I guess the bug closet. It felt empty save for the insane amount of webs, nests, and eyes decorating each corner of the enclosure. Something sparkled among the chaos of the closet. Underneath a Seth? See, that's Seth? I've never seen that word before. Seth? Underneath a Seth of centipedes and ants, a silver key rested on the shelf. You paused, unsure if it would be worth it to fish it away from the sea of insects before you. I guess that closet just wasn't cleaned <laughs> ever. It was just left in there forever and the bugs just infested that place. I don't know. Take the key. Taking a deep breath, you maneuver your hand into the mess of the closet before you. You had a feeling these bugs weren't inherently harmless. It would be best to take caution and try to pry the key without angering them. Press the right keys before time runs out. Mm, what if we just simply stood here with a look at the bugs, you know, saying, ooh, cool bugs, you know, what, what kind of insect is that one? One centipede crawling on you wasn't enough to make you panic, but the longer you try to pry the key away from the insects, the more it crawled into your hand in turn. Feeling of thousands of tiny legs scrambling into your sleeves and up your arms was revolting. You dropped the key on the floor to start swatting at your arms. Of course, this only caused insects to panic as well, making them scrabble around your body in a most chaotic fashion. A foul odor emitted from some of the bugs you squashed, a repellent to other bugs perhaps. A warning. However, these bugs didn't work like they did back in Lumion. They were a kindred spirit, a vengeful spirit of species. 
The spiders especially didn't take too kindly to you squashing one of their own. Despite their small size, you saw one of them rapidly crawl circles around your hand, encasing in a sticky, clingy web. That's, that's one fast spider. Mm -hmm. Shaking them off, you stumbled backwards, feeling your breathing quicken the more bugs tried to climb onto you from the floor below. Stop! No! Thousands of bites pierce your skin. You can feel an irritating venom course through your veins. The agitation made you lightheaded. Every attempt to get them off of you only made more and more climb up your skin faster. Yeah. Soon your face was completely covered in bugs. You feel a tickle in your ears, disgusting, tiny claws prodding to your nose and poking at your mouth. Well, if you have any if you have like any kind of like phobia regarding bugs, this is probably not a good situation. Uh, seeing tiny kaleidoscope looking eyes staring back into yours as they made their mark on your eyelashes was enough to cause you to faint. The venomous creatures numb your entire body as your eyes slowly close for the last time. Bad and get eaten by bugs. Mostly spiders it seems like, it's just spider eating you. Press the right keys before time runs out. After successfully grabbing a key, you try to guide any lingering bugs off of it. The silver of the key looked rusted, as if it hadn't been touched in a long, long time. You got silver key. Great. A new arrow popped up. Uh, what happens if we go back up, actually? Okay, that goes to here. Or the two, it seems like. But where's the third floor, you know? Down here. Negative one? Hmm. The first thing you noticed upon properly entering the room was a cool atmosphere clinging to your skin. The darkness surrounding the room wasn't intense and terrifying like you feared, but rather relaxing instead. A bright glow emanated from the tank. A crystal floated in the water, practically beckoning you closer. The crystal felt more alluring than anything else you've seen in the lighthouse so far. How am I supposed to get that out? Um, is that Milnor? You know? Thor's hammer? Also, apparently we're in negative one, I'm assuming under sea level. Literally underwater. A weapon of great power lie before you. Its aura was intense, making you feel the way with it before you even picked it up. The cool metal stung against your skin. He had a feeling this sort of weapon didn't take too kindly to strangers. I'm ever so sorry, but I may need your help. Forgive me. You got hammer. The magical hammer. The war hammer. Let's see. Can I look at this aquarium, I guess. Or not an aquarium. I'm assuming it's not an aquarium. I think it's literally the ocean. For a brief moment, you uh, contemplated the consequences if you smash this glass with the hammer. No, no, that would only kill all of the fish inside. It would cause a catastrophic flood. Hmm, okay, maybe it is like an aquarium. Maybe it's like enclosed. Not to mention, it would definitely be enough chaos to draw suspicion. I'd be found out and locked away immediately. I'm certain of it. You look again towards the glass. Mm, do it. Do it. No, I'm not going to do it. You protested, trying to shake off this intense urge to break the glass. Do it. Do it. Do it now. You looked down the hammer, then back up in the tank. The jam glistened in the water, reflecting beautiful light throughout the room. You pondered the consequences once more. Breaking the glass would cause the room to flood, and then it would definitely attract attention. But then again, that would, could work in your favor. If you grabbed the crystal and ran far from this room, you're fairly certain you would get caught amongst the confusion and panic it would take to mend the catastrophe. Is that how, is that how you guys think? I feel like the water would like rush into the room way too quick for you to grab it, but... The lies of the aquatic creatures, however, weighed a bit heavier on your soul. Do it! An intense instinct shot through your body like an arrow to the chest, as if like a player character is controlling your every action. In like a visual novel-esque video game. What were you doing, you wondered? You realized your life was on the line, and you felt vindicated under the assumption that your life was worth more than a few fish you were going to outlive regardless. You know, it's just free sushi. Just simply eat the fish. No, you realize they're so guaranteed they die if the room flooded regardless. There'll be water on the floor. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They'll just simply swim on the floor. A loud shatter echo throughout the room, consequently followed by an intense rupture of water flowing out of the tank. Another crash of the glass. Then another. 
Water spouted out rapidly, soaking your feet in the hem of your dress. You saw the glimmering light of the crystal fall through the hole in the glass, but you managed to catch it before it collided with the floor. My apologies. I'm afraid dire times require dire actions. This room served no further use to you. You turn your heel and escape the flooding room. You got a crystal. I got misguided, apparently. Well, there's also another crystal over here. It feels perfect and serene. A shame you have to bash it into smithereens. <laughs> Rhymes. Break. Break the glass in case of emergencies. The glass shatters upon impact with countless shards decorating the floor beneath you. With careful hands, you pry the crystal out of the casing. There we go. I'm terribly sorry, but there wasn't any time to find another solution. I got crystal. Uh, where do I go now, though? Do you go back down, I wonder? To your surprise, this door didn't lead to the aquarium anymore. Was this another safety feature of the lighthouse? Regardless, you step through the door. Anything to keep moving forward. Okay, I was wondering if we got softlocked because we broke the aquarium, right? <laughs> You attempted to get an idea of your surroundings, but the only thing you could take note of was the floors made of wood due to the sound of the floorboards of your every step. Creak, creak, creak. You paused a moment, reaching your hands out to try and feel any furniture that might be around. Creak. The floorboards cried out. The only problem? You didn't make a step to cause the noise this time. You held up the candle, which barely lit the dark room around you. There didn't appear to be much into this room at first glance. However, upon further inspection, you notice a hatch door on the floor. Just what could this lead to? Hmm, interesting. We're on floor one, by the way. Seems like this lighthouse is magical. We just end up a different floor somehow. Inside you find something most unusual for items and drawers. A variety of old books of varying subjects. The most common theme among them seems to be their importance to other kingdoms. You eventually find one pertaining to the history of religion and folklore among the kingdom of Lumion. You notice a specific page bookmarked. Let's read the page. Chapter X, The Royal Family The Lux lineage falls from a direct line to the divine, the almighty light which guides us all. It's said that the light blessed the king with their own power once long ago, and that powerful energy has passed down throughout generations since then. These blessed individuals aim to rule over all of Lumion with kindness and compassion, being most well-renowned for their uncanny healing abilities and other proficiencies in magic. Each ruler has but a new form of prosperity among the kingdom, and as the family tree grows, so will the light surrounding the world. You look through the pages, always seem to be description of past rulers or their images next to them. Whoever wrote this book seemed to view the family in high regards. The amount of praise was so overwhelming, it felt like you were reading a performance piece from a bard rather than a historical record. Any criticisms addressed in regards to the royal family were quickly denounced by this author with much vigor. Uh, apparently this author is very biased. Skimming through the pages, you stop once you spotted something familiar. Yourself. You knew this book must have been, uh, new? Hmm. Little typo there. Anyway, uh, you knew this book must have been new, based on the fresh smell of the paper. However, you never expected to be new enough to include your likeness. Strangely enough, the corner of your page was dog during the book. Perhaps your captor needed a visual reference of you for the kidnapping. For kidnapping. Princess... Elizabeth Lux, or Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Elizabeth Lux, the merciful mother of light. Princess Elizabeth shows kindness to all of the kingdom, rich or poor, young or old. Our princess has sworn to take care of everyone who steps foot into Lumia no matter the cost. She has spent much of her life thus far dedicated to studying ancient texts regarding the divine, and is truly the most in tune of our beloved light. The power she possesses holier than any recorded in a ruler thus far. Hmm. No matter the cost. He closed the book. Once closed, you notice something peculiar in the back of the cover. There, you can read the number 24 in small letters. 24. I guess that's significant, <laughs> you know? To your surprise, the door is now wide open. Huh? It looks like there's another room behind the closet. A hidden room. How curious. 
Interesting. Mm, which way do we go? I guess let's check out the hatch first. A hatch door on the floor. You notice the wood here appears to be sturdier than the rest of the floor. Not that the distinction matter too much. Swing the hatch open, you see nothing but the destruction you wrought on the floor below. Oh, it's the, the aquarium. Okay. That's what we destroyed. Okay, we just click on the arrow, I guess. Walking into yet another eerie room, you couldn't shake the feeling that you were being watched. You cautiously walk further into the room, looking back and forth for any sign of intelligent life. Nothing. Out of light, you stray far from your land. Has the darkness become your salvation? An eerie voice whispered right into your ear, as if it were hovering behind you. Startled, you are turned around but were met with nothing once more. Am I going mad? I must be. No, no. You are perfectly sane, little firefly. You gasp, hearing the voice now whispering directly into your other ear. Unsurprisingly, nothing was to your other side. You looked around with a sense of cautious confusion as the voice spoke out to you once more. Pray tell, what happens when extension of such power as yourself strays far from the source it came from? Uh, I guess, uh, I don't know why that's, I, don't know, I wonder why this is highlighted. Is it because of our traits, maybe? That's interesting. Let's say, yeah, let's say, I'm sorry to intrude. A low chuckle rang your ear. Little firefly, you're far from intruding. You can rest here for as long as you like. I can? You looked around with a puzzled expression, still trying to find the source of the whispering voice. Certainly. Come into the light. Let me see you up close. You found yourself strangely drawn to the mirror in the middle of the room. Taking cautious step after another, you heard the familiar whisper once more. Good. Now I can see you better. The voice rang in your ears, but you were now able to identify the source. The mirror was speaking to you. It must be enchanted somehow. More importantly, however, you notice it contained one of the very same crystals you needed for the security system. One's face can tell many tales, little firefly. You're interested in my perfective crystal, aren't you? Yes, admittedly. Our reflection tells a story of your past, present, and undecided future. You heard a low, almost eerie chuckle escaping the enchanted object. Tell you what. Indulge me. Let me see your story. Let me peer into your very soul. And perhaps I'll give you my crystal in return. Peer into my soul. I'll just be looking at you very, very closely. Just comply and the crystal will be yours. What do you say? Seems like a trap, but sure. Wonderful. Now where to begin? The mirror tisk and tutted to itself, leaving you to stand there awkwardly in front of it, while it thought out to itself on what information it wanted to know. You actually managed to get a better look at your reflection here. Your nightgown has certainly seen better days after everything you've been through. Your eyes trailed upwards, looking at your face, and then... Huh? You made a confused noise, getting closer to the mirror to look at yourself. Hmm, is something the matter, princess? Your hand gently traced the bows in your hair, fixing them up ever so slightly to lay better on your head. I don't remember putting these bows in my head before bed. I haven't worn anything like this in a long, long time. I'm not even sure if these bows are mine. Where do they come from? Ah, oh, is that so? If you like, princess, I could search your memories for an answer. Perhaps the information you seek is out of reach of your mind in your weakened condition. In fact, this might be the uh, perfect place to start to understand your story better. Yes, yes, the bows are a good place to start. It's pronounced bows, right? I will say bow. That's not right. <laughs> because, you know, a lot of words in English are spelled the same but pronounced differently. The mirror spoke, now buying the way for your consent to search your mind. The crystal above it glowed and made a low hum as you saw the contents of the mirror change and distort. Your mind felt numb as the hum got louder and louder. You became lightheaded and slightly dazed, but you managed to keep a steady footing on the ground beneath you. 
You saw flashes of your time in the lighthouse appear before you, bit by bit, like watching your life rewind at rapid speed. The only difference is it appeared to not be from your perspective. What a strange thing to look at yourself from a viewpoint outside of your eyes. It's kind of like a third person view, you know? Third person camera. Which, to be honest, sometimes when I dream, you know, when you sleep, uh, when, when you have a dream, or whatever, sometimes I do have those kind of weird, like, third person camera dreams where, like, I'm, I'm like, controlling myself, but, like, I, like I, it's weird, right? It's like you're, you're feeling you're controlling yourself, you know, you're like, like as usual but like your eyes are not obviously in front of you it's like behind you it's like it's really weird you know it's probably because you play too much video games that you like have those kind of dreams but it's happened before it's a very strange feeling anyway it'd be kind of cool actually if it's like if you could do that in real life just imagine you know the peripheral vision you could have you know anyway you saw yourself waking up the bows indeed and tied neatly in your hair just a little further back and... Wait, I... You started to protest until a wave of dizziness overcame you once more. It would be wise to not interrupt me while this is happening, princess. While I'm connected to you, your reflection is connected to me. Disrupting my process would be rather unpleasant. This mirror was digging up memories of your life prior to the lighthouse. The further back it went, the more uneasy you felt. Hmm... Interesting. Mm, sure, let's try to calm ourselves. I want to see what happens. You focus your energy to maintaining your composure. Looking over to the mirror frame, you watch time move backwards silently. Hmm, those bows don't appear to be anywhere here, the mirror said, although to you it felt obvious this mirror had a different goal in mind than finding your bows. Suddenly, the rapid movements of your past came to a halt. The mirror was replaying your memories to you. It connected to your mind and made you relive the moment, experience the same feelings, smell the same smells, and feel the world around you that you were once so familiar with. You felt the scorching sun against your face. It was hotter than hell on that fateful day. The crackling sound of fire around you as you were led to the ritual grounds only made your feelings of unease worse. The only thing you could rely on in this moment were your senses other than sight. The blindfold and the restraints made it hard to do much else. You heard cheering from a crowd. Praise to your god from your royal advisor. He loudly rambled to the audience of what you could only assume was your entire kingdom. You had long since given up any hope, and your advisor could tell from the way he spoke. He talked of you as if you were a savior, who be with one with the divine in mere moments, consumed by the light of a fire getting closer and closer to your skin. I guess, isn't that like, I mean, that's every like witch trial, you know, except this is apparently like a, is a good thing, you know? It's like, if you get burned to a crisp, that means you're a witch. If you, or if you don't, or what was it? Like, if you're on fire, but like you don't get burned, that means you're a witch. And if you don't, if you do get burned, you're not a witch, but also you're a witch anyway. So it doesn't matter. But it's kind of like the opposite, right? She's not being condemned. She's more like, she's like, it's a good thing. It's like, thanks for being sacrificed, you know? Hooray. Uh, more religious leaders from your kingdom chanted the language you spent your life dedicated to learning, spouting holy words that would end in your demise. They said your sacrifice would save them all. You heard a scream. At first, you assumed it was the cheering of the crowd getting more intense, but then was followed by another. And another. A cry from your advisor to stop the ritual was heard as the floor beneath you shook and trembled. You felt someone grab you rather forcefully, dragging you off the platform you were propped on top of and ripping off your blindfold. An invasion of dark figures from a neighboring, uh, neighboring kingdom were interrupting the ritual, killing off every guard in sight. Oh, okay. You were ushered off to a falsified sense of safety. Internally, you were grateful for the ambush, even if it would only prolong your life temporarily. But you could never forget the unease you felt when you saw how many people were out in the crowd, all staring right at you with a mixture of unpleasant expressions. Hmm. Okay, mixed feelings. You know, it's like, on one hand, you don't want to be sacrificed to a bunch, uh, you know, for a bunch of people just so they can be happy. But on the other hand, being saved also means uh, murdering, you know, the rest of the kingdom. 
uh, it seems like, you know, from like a different force. You stumbled backwards as you felt the grip on your mind cease. The feeling of judgment still lingered. Like their eyes were still piercing your soul. Ah, my apologies. I let my curiosity get the better of me. This was merely yesterday. To be sacrificed to a god of the sun directly over you. People cheering for your demise. How tragic. You had a pain expression in your face. Unable to tell if the mirror's sympathetic tone was to mock you or not. Although it's locked away safe inside after that, the evasion lasted longer than any I've ever heard of. I could hear the combat from inside the castle walls. It was because of the invasion I'm still here today, strangely enough. The Lightkeeper had a plan in mind for you and your kingdom, one that the ritual to sacrifice you will have ruined. I suppose, when you say it that way, I should be grateful to her. But what exactly does she have planned for me? What is to be my fate? The Lightkeeper desires many things. Taking your kingdom for her own is on the top of that list of desires. I cannot say more than that, I'm afraid. I see. You know, you seem oddly calm for someone in your situation. Why is that? I have no choice. There's no time for rest or grief. No time for betrayal or hope. If I stop for even a moment, something horrible could happen. I need to focus on the task at hand. Something horrible could happen that is far out of your control. As it has and as it will again. Oh yeah? Screw you. I have no use for you. You tried my patience. You spoke out, grabbing the hammer you had used to break the glass of the aquarium. Bam. Without further hesitation, you swung the weapon towards the mirror, causing it to shatter with a brilliant, loud crashing sound. You just break everything, by the way. Also, this is like many years bad luck. The power from inside of the shattered mirror combusted into a ring of smoke that filled up the entire room in a dense fog. A familiar, feeling, uh, a familiar feeling flooded your mind like a wave came crashing down on you, encapsulating your entire being. Encapsulating? You felt all your feelings that you've pushed down inside resurface, every painful memory replay in your mind bit by bit. Is this the only way I can truly protect myself? After dedicating my life to my home, my home, my kingdom, they would throw me away without a second thought. Why is that? Was it for power? Control? Or just out of plain stupidity? I've had enough. I can't sit here and let this happen again. They want to be protected at my expense. They want a false salvation. They want to use me to their heart's desire. Well, they can find someone else. I'll never let that happen again. Not from them. Not from anyone. It doesn't matter who gets hurt in the process. I never once did, did it? I'll make them sorry. Ending misguided soul. You know, I, she was she was gonna like you know gaslight, uh, gatekeep girl bosses. Well, I, I had a feeling that she was gonna do. She was just gonna take that hammer and start bashing heads in. You know, but I guess that's it. it just kind of ends there. Hmm. Kind of unsatisfying to be honest. But I guess that's. What happens if you start breaking things? Her soul, or rather her traits, become misguided, I guess. Kinda badass though. <laughs> I don't know, I like her being misguided. She's gonna freaking like you know. She's gonna freaking like become like a, a like a warlord or something. Take over the world. She becomes like Sigmar, you know, the Warhammer. <laughs> anyway, um Alright. Well, that's an ending. So, you know, last time we took the hammer, just smashed everything. We could also not do that. You hear the sound of water. You tell it wasn't in motion like a stream or river, though the sudden movement indicated there must be something inside. Hmm, interesting. Okay, wait, hold on. So this hatch is different. In this run, anyway. Uh, let's, uh, sure. Let's do the stupid thing. Let's jump in. Whee! You were hesitant at first, but you saw the light of the crystal flowing down within the depths of the tank. You had no choice. Gathering your courage, you plunge into the freezing water. Swim! Your body shrewd up on instinct to colliding with the bitterly cold water. Desperately, you try to keep your mouth closed despite wanting to gasp on impulse. Your eyes adjusted to the darkness as you look below you for the light of the crystal. There it is. Huh? Why does it feel like it's getting lighter down here? 
Looking up, you saw the source of light you felt grow by the minute. A large beast swam before you, baring its teeth and slowly inching closer and closer. You cursed your decision making internally, your survival instincts kicking in as you swam down and underneath the fish and attempts to disorientate it. Press the right keys before your time runs out. Mm, you know, maybe I just wanna like hang out here and like, like observe this magnificent giant like angler fish thing. That's what it's called, right? Angler fish. Well, a sharp tooth pierced through your torso, going through your heart as well as multiple bones. Mm. The pain was excruciating. The pain was short. Another crunch through your diaphragm and everything ended just like that. Whoops, a <laughs> bad ending. I guess it was a bad idea. Press the right keys or time runs out. Your swift movements were enough to temporarily confuse the gigantic crystal, enabling you to grab a hold of the magic crystal. Or, did I say that wrong? I, I must have said gigantic crystal. Confuse the gigantic creature, enabling you to grab a hold of the magic crystal. You kicked and pushed through the water faster than you ever had before in order to make a clean escape back up towards the hatch. Hiya! Emerging to the surface, you panically pull yourself up out of the hatch and onto the wooden floor. Ah! You keeled over, emptying the water in your throat and lungs into the hard wood floor. That's not good for the wood, you know? The shift in temperature between the freezing cold water and the lighthouse was enough to cause immense discomfort to your entire body. Still, looking down at the gemstone in your hand, you felt a wave of relief wash over you. You got a crystal. Amazing. We did it. Oh, uh, moving onwards to the next room, you pause in your tracks. Two voices could be heard nearby, arguing. You pause your steps, hiding behind a door that was slightly creaked open to observe the situation. What do you mean she's missing? You heard an imposing voice dominate the room, speaking to a dark folk creature who looked as if he wanted to be anywhere but here. Well, the chain had been severed, my lady. The door was unlocked. The princess is missing. You peered into the doorway, seeing a seven feet tall dragon-like creature hover over a small shadow of a being. Her scars swirled with an uncanny power. The sight alone caused your breath to hitch. She tisked, looking down at the survey with a disapproving expression. You mean to tell me that you neglected my orders to ensure the prison was of quality. The lightkeeper swiftly grabbed hold of the dark folk's chin, forcing their gaze up to her. Please forgive me, almighty lightkeeper. I swear I will correct my error, please. You idiot. You baka. You saw the server cower in her grasp. This plan will only work if she's alive, so you better find her fast. This is your last chance of redemption, if you continue to be so utterly incompetent. The dragon crouched down, slowly, taking her time as she forcefully let go of the servant's face in a way that pushed them backwards. Her eyes widened as you saw this being's face contort and morph. Her skin near her mouth widened and pulled apart as if it was some sort of slime or putty. Her hands flexed, bearing claw-like nails that you could have sworn weren't there moments before. Scales grew and covered her body as if it were nothing. The snapping sounds of her bones, rearranging to fill up the larger space, sent shivers down your spine. Shivers down your spine. That reminds me of spooky, scary skeletons. Sends shivers down your spine. You know, spooky, spooky, scary, like, dragon lady. I'll find her myself and make an example of your pathetic excuse for Severtoad. Your gaze shifted to the poor servant, nodding frantically. The tension in the air grew thick as the lightkeeper's form slowly turned back to what it was moments before. She tisked, looking away from the pathetic thing in front of her. Get out of my sight. I have no time for this. She said authoritatively. Author author I can't say that word. She said authoritatively. And just like that, you saw the servant dart out of the room. The lightkeeper lingered for a few moments, staring into a large tank that took up the majority of the room, but up to the very top of water. Different types of aquatic plants coated the floor of the underwater tank, gently flowing in motion over the calm water. 
she couldn't have gone far, not while her magic is still blocked. She let out a discontented noise before stomping out of the room. Hmm. You entered yourself after a few moments of silence. Again, uh, ignore the weird, you know, like, this is like, um, what do you call it? I'm not sure what you call it, but, you know, uh, an inconsistency. Because I feel like this little light here shouldn't be there anymore. Alright, so this time, while the mirror is peering into our soul, why don't we stop it instead? You fought against the mirror's influence, you didn't trust any of this, not one bit, and your survival instincts were taking over. You clutched your mind during the worst headache you've ever experienced as the humming noise reverberated inside of your brain. That's the right case where our time runs out! Alright. Ooh, wow, that's hard. Uh, you took one step back, then another. What are you doing? You fool, if you continue to do that, you'll... The voice spoke with such rigor that it only caused you to panic more. Whatever this thing was doing to you, it felt like you were both being torn apart, both in mind and body. You cried out, feeling a burning sting all along your face, painfully numbing your neck and ears. You couldn't hear anything for a moment. Your vision was foggy. The only thing you knew was that something was painfully wrong. Once your vision cleared, you looked back into the mirror to find out what the source of this excruciating feeling was. Ah, yes. <laughs> There's like... I was just thinking like... Did uh... More, like um... Merging your body and soul involve like putting a lot of Gorilla Glue on your face? <laughs> and just ripped it off? I don't know. The sight before you caused an overwhelming nausea to form in your gut. Your ears were still ringing. You can only faintly make out the sound of the mirror mentioning your reflection. Something about getting caught between. Something. The burning, wet feeling of your blood trickling down your own face was the only thing your mind could properly focus on. Kneeling over, you felt your vision fade in and out. In and out and in and out, and there was nothing left. Bad end. Got your face ripped off. Oops. Uh, can you survive that? Probably not, actually. The, the, the skin is actually very sensitive, you know, in the human body. You know, for example, if, if, if you burn off your skin, you know, it's like it's very hard to, like, fix that because uh, your skin is, like, the barrier to, like, for a lot of infections, you know? If you don't have your skin, you get, like, a lot of infections and you die easily. So, either way, it's a horrific fate. Anyway, break the glass. Oh wait, oh, someone can get terribly hit with this tip of the glass, maybe we should clean this mess? Sure, let's clean up these glass shards, by the way, that we <laughs> destroyed. Worry fill your eyes as you got to work. You use the ends of your nightgown to carefully pick up the wooden glass shards of glass. Uh, collected them bit by bit until no mess was left. Your eyes scanned the room for somewhere to dispose of them, eventually spawning a waste packet of sorts. It was empty. <laughs> like my soul. Or whatever. Joke said to say the everyone does everyone make that joke now? I feel like it's it became a meme now. Everyone makes that joke now. It's empty like my soul. Cautiously, you dump the glass shards into the container, leaving the room as clean as you could despite the circumstances. But I guess well actually when I think about it, I guess uh this developer didn't they make like a manly bass hero like reference a few times already? I, I remember there's at least one reference, I believe in one of their games. What was the one it was the one of the bunny? Little Red Memories, I think. I think they made a reference to Manly, like an Easter egg. I think they also made a reference to Markiplier or something. I don't know. Anyway, you let out sigh relief, you look proudly um, at your work. Now, no one get hurt. Great. Uh, you gain the trait Kind-Hearted. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Kind-Hearted. Hmm, interesting. Wait, 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 wait. There's a choice here. Um... Let us intervene to save that servant. You know, he didn't do anything wrong. Wait, stop. You called out on pure impulse, immediately running and getting in between the poor dark folk being and the lightkeeper. The latter of the two looked taken aback. Despite not seeing her eyes, you could tell by the way her jaw dropped suddenly that she was shocked from this development. I'm the one you want, right? Please don't hurt anyone. You pleaded, looking up at the towering woman before you. You relaxed ever so slightly as the lightkeeper's form slowly turned back to what it was moments before. 
even if the sound of her cracking bones was still rather unpleasant. She silently stood over you, her expression unchanged. The tension in the air was deadly thick. You. Go. She commanded, looking over at the servant you had just saved. The dark folk looked over at you, then the lightkeeper, before scurrying out of the room. You looked up at your captain with a nervous expression, wondering what she was plotting next. She looked down at you in turn, leaning forward in order to meet your gaze in a more leveled manner. How did you escape? The chains were worn. I noticed one that looked frail and worked away at it until it broke. My sincerest apologies. <laughs> sorry, sorry for like breaking these these chains that you used to like kidnap me and everything or like imprison me a silence fell between the two of you it was just awkward you turn yourself in why are you stupid <laughs> are you are you an idiot you were gonna hurt them you throw away your freedom for the sake of a creature you know nothing of I hate to be the reason behind unnecessary violence I've had my fair share of that already. You wanted to back up, but the taller woman only pulled your chain closer to herself. She stared into your eyes for what felt like an eternity before slowly letting go, standing upright. Your hand, her hand now stretched itself to you, making a gesture like she wanted you to put yours on top of it. You complied, hesitating ever so slightly. Well, if you comply with my wishes, then I'll do my best to comply with yours as well. She sandwiched your hand in between hers. You couldn't help but notice her wings stretching themselves around you in an almost protective fashion. For a second, you wonder if somehow your act of kindness had charmed your captor. She was so menacing moments before, but this wasn't like anything you expected. Come now, I won't be letting you out of my sight. Not after that stunt you pulled. She guided you out of the room, your hand in hers, her wing gently pushing you forward. You were utterly confused, yet you went along with it. If being kind made the lightkeeper kind to you in turn, then what harm could come from that? Kill them with kindness. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it's kind of a good ending in a way. And thus they went to like make out good. We did read this before. Oh yeah, 24, right? What's that related to? What do you mean 24? I don't know. Look at another book. Oh, oh, here you go. Wait, wait. So there's an option to look at another book. I didn't realize. Your expression lit up. One of your favorite books on the divine was in the lightkeeper's possession. Oh, interesting. A familiar sight comforted you as you opened the book. Wait, these footnotes, I... This is my handwriting. Did they take my book when they kidnapped me? You skimmed over the text. The divine has intervened in mortal life only once, blessing the king of old who passed down this blessing through his family tree. The king always referred to this gift as the enlightenment. Not only has it been recorded that those with the enlightenment possess the ability to create blinding amounts of bright light, but appears to its affects each member of the royal family differently. It affects yeah, anyway. A text taken from the King of the Old states that the light guides our path and makes us able to see that which is best for our people. We all have the capability to see so little without light. Our eyes are not well adjusted to darkness. The enlightenment provides me and my kin the ability to see possibilities which others cannot, guiding them through the unfamiliar and providing safety. This is one of the most famous explanations for the Enlightenment, with many philosophers and scholars having varying interpretations of any and all implications. The most popular theory to add on this statement is that the Enlightenment was a gift from the Divine in order to protect the Kingdom of Lumion from the evil darkness of the shadows and other dark folk. Your eyes dart to your handwriting scribbled underneath. Light is nothing without shadow. These two things work together in harmony to create a picture. The absence of one impairs visibility for all. You sighed, closing the book once more. As much as you adore the depth this author put into covering all the bases, you couldn't help but feel frustrated whenever someone used the Enlightenment's existence as proof that those who roam in darkness are evil incarnate. Your whole life has been dedicated to understanding the Divine and the Enlightenment, and you will continue to dedicate yourself until your dying breath. 
I got Lore Keeper. That's interesting. Admit your frustration. You saw something etched in the back of the book you didn't recognize. Number 03 was written in your handwriting. It looks so different from your very own. For a moment, you thought back at the note in the bug closet. Could it be? Oh, a small box sat on the shelf. You recognize the lock on it. It's a number lock. Ooh, interesting. Back in Lumion, most people use boxes like this to keep important keepsakes safe. Just what could be so important to the lightkeeper that she put it in a box like this? You felt your curiosity grow. Sure, let's put in a number combination. Let's put in 2403. Ta-da! The combination seemed to be correct. The box opened. Inside was a small hand mirror that you instantly took out. There was clearly something magical about it, but you weren't well versed enough in this type of enchantment to tell what it was. Excuse me. May I ask you about something I found? I am at your disposal, little firefly. What is in your mind? You held up the small object for the mirror to observe. This mirror, I can tell it has, it has some sort of magic infused inside of it, but I can't decipher what exactly that magic is. Both mirrors start to glow suddenly in a pulsing motion as the hand mirror levitated out of your hands and floated in front of your face. Ah yes, the mirror. I'm aware of it. This is a memory mirror, just like myself. However, this one was only made to store one memory in particular. Huh? One memory is stored on that? Whose memory is it? Could you show me, please? A few moments of silence fell across the room. You heard that also familiar mischievous chuckle right in your ear once more. As you wish, your highness. A familiar feeling flooded your mind, like a wave came crashing down on you, encapsulating your entire being. The mirror showed you a scene. You saw a castle shrouded in light, elegant decor, the draconic child being held within the depths of it below. A smaller voice rang in your ears. Your thoughts became clouded and drowned out. These must be the thoughts of this person's memory. These stupid chains. I wish I could burn this place to the ground. You heard the sounds of metal clanging together. The young one appeared to be gnawing away at her restraints in a frustrating attempt to break free. After proving unsuccessful, she slumped down the floor with a loud groan. Let me out of here! The tiny dragon banged on the side of the wall with her fists, immediately recoiling and shouting with pain. Ow! <clears throat> stupid walls! Stupid castle! Stupid kingdom! I hated here. I want to go back to my cave. It was nice and dark there, surrounded by my treasure. And my... I don't know, I was gonna say like... My my uh my gacha waifus, you know, because I'm just thinking like dragons, like stereotypical dragons, you know, they just hoard everything, and like in the modern world, you know, that's what they will hoard. They will hoard uh gacha, gacha, you know, pay to win gacha waifus, and like I don't know, trading cards, anything of value. Anyway, wait, the tra the dragon's child wings flared up, flapping in a panic and agitated manner. My treasure. Dang it, they confiscated all when they took me. Those bastards! A familiar voice interrupted her thoughts. Your, tr your treasure? You saw her rapidly turn her head to glare in the direction of the new voice, flapping her wings in an intimidating way. Or, well, as intimidating as someone her size could be. What do you want? Leave me alone! You already took everything from me! Looking over who she was talking to, you saw... Yourself. Or rather, you from a long, long time ago. You are clutching a gold ring in your hand, embellished with a green jewel of sorts. You watch your younger self walk over to the prisoner, shutting the door behind you with a click. Is this part of your treasure? My ring. Why does she have my ring? That's mine. Give that back, you little vermin. The small dragon lunged to grab the ring from the princess's hand, but the chains restrained her from doing so. Your younger self nervously looked up at her, placing the ring down on the floor and sliding it over to her. Huh? He's giving it back to me. She cautiously reached out, grabbing the ring and holding it close to her chest protectively. Why are you helping me? The guards said you stole this, but I don't believe them. You look no older than I am. My name is Elizabeth. 
I'm not really supposed to be here, but it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Darcy. A smile formed your past self's lips. Darcy? That's a lovely name. Heh, <laughs> thanks. I don't know, I imagine, I imagine Darcy to be a bit of a tomboy, I don't know. That's what I imagine her to be. Uh, the way she, grew, where she grew up though, and she looks different anyway. She's actually rather nice. So, uh, can you get me out of here? I'm afraid I cannot. Those chains are infused with my father's magic. It would take a skilled magic user to undo such a thing. Darcy groaned again. I'm gonna die alone down here. And don't say that. You didn't do anything to deserve being put down here. I swear, I'll try to convince my father to let you go. You sat down in front of the mirror displaying the scene before you. You thought it would have ended at that one memory, but were surprised to see more, and more play one after another. You smiled fondly, remembering your old friend. Every now and then, her internal thoughts would surround your mind, making you chuckle. You know, this is like basically like, like reading her diary, you know, in a way. It's like a magic diary. It's beaming her like, you know, her thoughts or her, or her, her old thoughts spraying through your brain. You remember Darcy. How could you ever forget her? Your father had ordered for her capture after finding her alone in a cave. Something about that never sat right to you. In Lumion, dragon folk are often regarded as chaotic, dangerous be beings. You know, they're very rebellious. They, um, I don't know. I was gonna. I, I can't think of something. Like I'm trying to think of like something like like uh, I imagine like um, you know the 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 Japanese anime trope. You know, like Japanese high schoolers. Like uh, girls in particular that wear masks and then they, they have baseball bats and they they wear like really long skirts or something and they like they, they literally sit in this in this way right what do you call them I forget what you call them uh, Yankees that's not right I don't know like delinquents basically but like female delinquents in particular mm, I can't remember what the word for it is but no no that's just that's just what I'm thinking of anyway they're like chaotic because they're like rebellious you know high schoolers it wasn't out of ordinary for the soldiers to capture one on sight however even as a child you didn't believe that to be true not one bit you never had much company around your age when you heard of the dragon girl they captured probably you didn't even care if she was guilty of a crime or not you just wanted to meet her you lost track of time as you recounted your past with darcy Ellie, what are you doing? Cut that out, damn it! You're gonna get in trouble. You observe your younger self holding a book of spells, taken directly from the King of Lumion. Chanting the words faintly, you didn't stop for anything, even Darcy protesting. The chains holding your friend dissolved into specks and sparkles of bright light, until the chains became no more. She looked down where her restraints used to be with a baffled expression. Y you really did it. She saved me? But she stole from her father to do so. Who knows what he'll do? Hurry, you have to get out of here before they find you. Wait, come with me. I can protect you, I swear it. I can't. I have people here who rely on me. One day, I'll rule over Lumin myself. And I'll make it a safe place for you and your people. That I promise you. Ellie, no. Your younger self held something in her hands. Placing into Darcy's of care, you recognize the small bows. They were the same ones you were currently wearing in your hair. Please, just don't forget me. You frowned once you heard a familiar noise, your father calling out your name from the floor above. You must go, quickly. I'll come back for you. I promise, Ellie. I won't stop until I become powerful enough to find you again. I'll become like seven feet tall like Dommy Mommy. Anyway, um... So much running. Ellie, your smile is bright enough to fill the darkest corners of the world of sunlight. You are my salvation in that prison. When I look into your eyes, I don't feel like the scared child I was, but the woman I must become to keep you by my side. I want to let these selfish desires overtake both our spirits. I laid the world to fire and ash just to keep you smiling. I promise I'll come back for you. You stood in from your spot, watching on the floor, gently stroking the image of Darcy in the mirror before it faded away completely, leaving you alone to look at your reflection. Ellie. 
Turning around, you recognize your old friend, only older and more powerful. She's like, you know, level 99. She like grinded XP. You know? <laughs> this lightkeeper, you had your suspicions it could be Darcy before, but now you're more certain than anything. You weren't sure how long she'd been standing there watching you, but judging by her expression, she appeared like she'd been wanting to say something for a long time. You're just awkwardly standing there. <laughs> you smiled. You came back for me. I promised I would. Ending. Lore Keeper. There you go. Well, that's an interesting ending. That's also a bit of a happy ending in a way. Um, because, you know, we, we get a lot of very, uh, uh, very um, enlightening backstory of how these two are related. So that's that's pretty interesting. You know, it's funny how, like, some of the endings here is, like, very, like, not super obscure, but, like, definitely it takes more steps, you know? It's, like, harder to get. But anyway... All right, so we're back in the bug room. Uh, what if we ignore the bugs this time? I mean, we ignore it this time. You continue walking through the room, suddenly kicking your legs with each step in attempts to shake the feeling off. A cascade of itchiness overcame your ankles once more. So much so, it became impossible to ignore much longer. Against your uh, better judgment, you lift the hem of your dress slightly to see what was causing your increasing discomfort. Bug bites. Nasty ones of that. Fresh, small red dots coated your lower legs. You can see them begin to swell before your very eyes. Yet there was not a single living bug to be seen. What in Light's name? How did this happen? It looks infected. I've never seen a bug bite spread so fast like this. It's so itchy. Alright, so let's uh, resist the temptation. You know, when you, when you scratch a rash, you know, it just makes it worse. Um, even though that's really what you want to do, usually, when you're very itchy. No, I I'm better than this. I'm a lady. It'll only bother me more if I indulge. I'll just have to press onwards. There are more important things that need to be dealt with first. Then I'll take care of these gross inflictions. As disgusting as, as it was, you had to move forward. I got trait strong will. So there it goes, another trait. All right, so we're back all we over here. So we had our little like session with the mirror, um, but this time we also have a different option. So let's express our discomfort in the situation. So what do you pr propose I do? Let myself be tossed in between life and death scenarios against my will? I'm afraid I have it not in me to endure such a mess any longer. <laughs> then what will you do, my liege? It's not like you have much cho of a choice in the matter. You wore a displeased expression, walking closer up to the mirror. With one fell swoop, you gripped the crystal at the top of the frame and pried it out. Wait, what are you... You got a crystal, you know? It's mine now. I tried remaining polite, but I simply have no time for this. You huffed, beginning to walk away from the mirror. However, it seemed the mirror had other plans. A loud, echoing scream emitted from the reflective object, piercing your ears. You quickly covered your ears, turning backwards to see the mirror pulsating with glowing enchanted light. This looked familiar. You recognized that it was acting as an alarm. Once recognition clicked, you wasted no time in darting towards the nearest door. Your legs still itched from the bug bites. Your feet were tired. You were unbearably cold, and yet never felt so close to death as you've been within the last 24 hours. Yet, you keep- you keep- no. Yet, you kept running. You ran as fast as you could. You could hear footsteps tr trembling on the floor above. The distinct sounds of yelling and someone barking orders filled the lighthouse. Trambling? Is that a word, by the way? Trambling? I've actually never heard of that. Tr trambling. I don't know, anyway. It wasn't long before you had crashed into a shadowy figure. Or rather, creature. You recognized them as a dark folk, and they recognized you as their target. They lunged at you with a sharp spear, only barely missing your hair by an inch. You saw the spear they used to get stuck in the cracks of the wall beside you. With one hurried motion, you levered the spear out of the wall and held it up to, to your throat. Wait, what? To my- to your throat? Or you- uh, it's getting confusing. I think it's mixed up. It's like you lever, or is it levered or levered? You levered, you levered the spear out of the wall and head up to their throat, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I don't know, it's confusing sentence there. 
because it seemed like you love no wait no no maybe it's true actually maybe it, you maybe you, oh, no no okay maybe it's true actually she she did like point it to herself i was confused about that why would she do that you know but i guess maybe she did you lever the spear out of the wall and pointed it at yourself i guess is what she's trying to do stop a voice commanded through the room causing dark folk a uh, person to freeze in their tracks don't move a step closer i'm resigned to my fate i'd rather die my own by my own hands yeah she is threatening to kill herself <laughs> that's that's what she'll doing i'll do it i swear you called out having absolutely no intention of ending your own life here oh <laughs> you're bluffing truthfully that's the last thing you will want to do in this moment but it's the first thing your mind came up with to avoid being apprehended the source of the commanding voice showed herself to you her expression hidden behind a bejeweled mask still you didn't break eye contact choosing to stare right at her as you held the weapon to your neck a princess put the spear down she spoke of a sense of authority that almost shook your resolve but it wasn't enough you need me alive, do you not? If you did it, you wouldn't have gone through all this trouble. The opposing figure took a step backwards. She looked at you with an air of uncertainty, like no one had ever said such things to her. Silence. A sudden realization ran through your mind. You were in control. You could make any demand and they would have to hear you out. Now that you knew that they needed you alive, you just had to make sure they believed you'd be willing to throw your life away should they try to force you to something unpleasant. Of course, this plan wasn't foolproof, no plan is. However, once you had managed to convince them to remove the chains around your neck, you felt better at your chances of survival. One request after another, and it became apparent they would do anything to appease you. You had a chance, a chance to take your life back into your own hands. Your decisions, your actions, thanks to your strength, you could finally reclaim it all for yourself. Ah yes, the true, like, gatekeep, gaslight girl boss ending. She, really, she just became the Dark Lord, is what I like to imagine anyway. I don't know, she just she just became, like, the ruler of the lighthouse. And everyone just fall, did what she wanted, you know. Like, she did what she wanted, you know. And, like... She has like a bunch of butlers now and like the light keepers like just kissing her, her feet. I don't know. Anyway, um, there you go. I mean, that's also kind of like a goodish ending. <laughs> it's like, it's, well, you took control, you know. You let me, uh, would you be so kind to let me use the crystal now? You reach your hand up near the top of the mirror waiting for a response. Hmm. Yes, I suppose you've proven yourself worthy. Very well, you may take it. You smile, gently prying the beautiful gem from the frame of the mirror. You got the crystal! Okay, there you go. That was easy. Alright, so we got the crystal this time without any violence, by the way. Also, if you notice, there's a bunch of eyes on the walls. Save game. So we got all three crystals. Let's move on. Aha. Guess not. I guess we'll place the crystals. Before you stand a stone tablet with three notches. Do you want to put all the magic crystals in here? Nah, I'll just stand here forever, doing nothing. Okay, fine. The crystals glow, reflecting in the iridescent light all throughout the dimly lit room. You watched in awe as sparks of magical energy came out of the crystals, connecting to each other through beams of light. You noticed it was making a faint whirring sound that progressively got more powerful. You felt calm. Serene. Until you felt something grab onto your wrists. You stare up at the towering dragon, clutching tightly onto you as the whirring of the crystals grew louder and louder. You. You fool. What do you think you're doing? She yelled over the sounds of the crystals, yanking your arm to pull you backwards away from the mechanism. You stumbled onto the ground. You're trying to go back. Do you have a death wish? Fine. If you won't stay here, then I'll just have to make you stay. Wait. You crash to the floor with a thud. The lightkeeper's grip on your arm only got tighter each passing moment. You snatch the cold mask from the lightkeeper's face, disorientating her enough to weave your way out from underneath her. Can like <laughs> under her like under her like dress, you know? It's kind of it's a funny image to me. She looked uh, completely bewildered and a tad flustered, nothing like the fearsome woman you had seen minutes, uh, minutes prior. 
Darcy, listen to me. Darcy? There she is. You, you remember me. Darcy called out over the sounds of the magical mechanisms getting louder and louder. You turn around, frankly pushing the crystals down to the sockets of more forest. You're going to push it in, just like ram sticks, you know, I got to make sure it's in there. All around you, green beams of light twisted and contorted, forming geometric patterns that shooted the surrounding lighthouse. Once the shield was up, the whirring calmed down and everything came of a standstill. You relax with deep breaths escaping your lips. You turn the security on. I thought surely you were trying to escape, weren't you? She took a few steps closer to you, speaking in a noticeably softer voice. Why in the divine's name would I do that? Well, I, I did kidnap you. You know, I did kidnap you and everything. I certainly didn't expect you to remember me either. Oh, Darcy, how could I ever forget the dragon who made my youth less lonely? You let out a lighthearted laugh. Truth be told, you felt like you were able to properly breathe for the first time since being captured here. There had always been tales of dragon folk and princesses being at odds with each other. But for Darcy and yourself, the opposite was true. I mean, I guess, oh, actually, when I think about it, I guess so. You know, like cliche medieval, you know, fantasy. I guess it would be like dragons or the bad guys and princesses get captured. Never thought about that. But who's the knight, you know? Usually there's a knight character. Where's that, you know? I guess not. They're not in this story. All those days sneaking off to meet you, I can never forget it. Not in a million years. After you left, I never thought I'd see you properly again, especially for our divulging reputations. How could I just leave you there, after hearing what those despicable people planned to do to you? Just thinking about it makes my blood boil. Well, thankfully the magic here should protect us from outsiders for the time being. I'm sorry for chaining you up, Ellie. This lighthouse isn't exactly the safest place to be. I promise, my princess, I'll make it up to you. Nothing will ever hurt you again. You felt a familiar cold hand caress your cheek gently, and the semblance of anger in Darcy was replaced by something much softer. Something much more loving. Um, I guess it works out. Just kidnap your lover. It's fine. Don't worry about it. The, mor the moral of the story is simply kidnap <laughs> your girlfriend. And it will all work out in the end. Uh, you have been with Darcy for a couple months now. The lighthouse was keeping you both safe inside, although you've been making plans to attempt to go further out past the sea. Are you almost ready, my princess? Darcy called out to you, standing off to the side a bit awkwardly with her wings covering her face. You finish putting on your dress, adjusting your hair accessories ever so slightly. I think so. Just one more thing and... Okay, you can look now. The dragon turned around, her wings falling back behind her as she smiled at you. Smooch. My darling, you look just as beautiful as I'd always remembered you. I'm glad we were able to steal that dress back for you. You felt Darcy gently pull your face close to hers, pressing your lips against yours. The feeling always gave you a spark, uh, um, always gave you a spark, like an electric current shocked your entire body the second your lips connected, only to melt away into the happiest of feelings imaginable. You smile as you pulled away from Darcy. Truthfully, you are much too kind. I'll give you my thanks for retrieving so many of my things. Just, just, just a bit of larceny, that's all. Technically, it belonged to her, you know? Like, you know, just go in, break into, like, the castle and everything. You know, like, just, you know, kill a bunch of people, just take her stuff back, don't worry about it. You looked out with a sadder smile, thinking back on everything you had to leave behind at home. All the people you loved, all the possessions you cherished. It is really no problem, I assure you. One day, I'll take Lumion back from its horrid rulers, and we will become the new ones in their stead. No more terrifying lighthouse, no more darkness, no more pain or suffering for you or for anyone undeserving. Anything and everything you could ever want will be at your fingertips. You look back up at the lightkeeper who is holding you as if you're the most precious thing in this world. I think I already have everything I could ever want here with you. Isn't that so cheesy? Your ending. All right, that's the lesbian ending anyway. <laughs> that's, that's like the make out ending. All right, well, there you go. So yeah, that's that's the video game. And again, like uh, I think there was also yeah, the Rain Era. I'm not familiar with that person, but they also made music for this game. But uh, yeah, it's mainly made by Small Straw Bunny and Kathinka, I believe, which are two developers I'm familiar with. 
So there you go. That's all of the endings of the game. You know, as it turns out, getting the trait endings, by the way. So there's actually like, um, what, like nine endings or whatever. I think nine, nine-ish endings, right? One, nine, anyway, I don't, I don't know how to count. I think it's nine endings. Um, but ironically, getting the trait ending, at least a few of the trait endings, which is based on like, you know, your actions in the playthrough, uh, end up being the hardest. I don't know. They're like, it's harder to get when the like, for example, the strong willed ending or like the, the kind hearted ending, you know, it's a bit more obscure, right? Cause you do very specific things that I didn't think to do. Um, getting the true ending is actually easier, which is weird. Cause you think that getting the true ending is like the hardest thing you would do you know, like in, in, in the visual novel anyway, with multiple endings. But ironically, it's like the easiest. I, I wouldn't call it a true ending. I would call it the normal ending, really. I don't know. Um, but I do like the idea, though. Like, even though it was obscure, I even had to go into the game's code or whatever to figure it out. Like, I always do when I get really stuck in, like, a game with multiple endings. Um, it, it was interesting, though. It was, like, very interesting how, like, there's, like, consequences to certain decisions. And those decisions actually compounded you're into like you know consequences later on which also affect your character's like personality and then you know different outcomes happen which is pretty cool i like it i really like that idea you know i don't know it's like really cool it reminds me like i mean just role-playing games in general right that's what that's what happens in role-playing games and like good role-playing games in particular that actually account for your decisions and not simply like you know there's a lot of modern games out there where there's like there's a karma system whatever you know there's a good karma or bad karma and there's like very like binary like outcomes like you, you do a bad thing you do a good thing and then, but the story just ends up the same way no matter what for the most part this game um and a few other games as well uh, they actually take like the branching decisions and actually make it interesting which is really cool i like it even though it is obscure though i wish there was a little bit more i guess the only thing and then is you know maybe it's just making the game easier really but like i kind of wish um for the point click aspects i wish it was more obvious what you could click on uh because i i don't me personally i just don't like i don't like point click adventure games at least uh traditional ones you know the ones where like it's just not obvious what you're supposed to click on it's like it doesn't get highlighted or whatever you know i like dong and that's why i like dong and ropa by the way in dong and ropa um in in that game series there's a button you can like press and that would highlight all the things you click on which is really nice i don't know i i, I like that it's kind of like a how do you say like a compromise you know in between just you know you, you obviously maybe you don't want to make it too obvious and just have like a giant red circle you know like a youtube thumbnail giant red circle and giant red arrow hey click on this you know maybe you don't want that because that's very distracting and you know um it's like uh kind of like dampens the whole like atmosphere and like you know uh, ambience of like the art but I, I would like, you know, to press a button and then and, and show like, hey, by the way, you click on this, you know, if I get lost, I don't know what to click on, you know, stuff like that. It'd be nice. I don't know. But that's just me. I'm just, I definitely like, you know, I prefer like baby easy mode when it comes to like point click. Because to me, that I don't know, it doesn't require skill necessarily to like figure out what to click on, you know, it's just like, it's just dumb luck. Uh, in my opinion, anyway, I don't know. But that, I don't know, that's just me. Um... But other than that, I mean, what else? I mean, I, I like the general, like, gameplay. Uh, I like how it adds some, like, QTEs. Not too complicated in terms of, like, the actual, like, you know, action sequences, I guess, quote-unquote. But, you know, it's just a nice little thing, I guess. I guess as long as you don't overdo it, you know? Because the thing of QTEs is, like, it is a little bit of cliche. I feel like ever since QTEs became a thing in video games, developers have been abusing it <laughs> ever since. Ever, even, like, modern games, they do it, like, too much. <laughs> Because like a little thing to like force your player to like interact with the game so they don't get bored. You know, it's kind of like uh, as if they're like a toddler, you know, you know, flash some keys in front of them. But it's, you know, it's fine. It was like, it was just a, it was like a few times, it's like whatever. Um, so I don't mind it really. Anything else? Um, I mean, obviously the art is, yeah, it's good. I think I, I like the art. The art generally is pretty good as usual. Um, music is... Yeah, it's all right. I think someone actually made music for this game in particular, so it's it's okay. Very um, you know, very medieval, I guess. I'm not sure if, the, if that's the right word to describe it, but you know, it's just nice ambient music. I think it fits. Um, 
anything else um writing I, I like the story right yeah again i really like the whole branching system i think that's the thing that stands out most to me is like how your decisions actually cause a lot of interesting consequences you know and you can accomplish the same goal in slightly different ways it's pretty cool i like that i really like that actually that's, that's, that's like really cool i like it i wish it was um I don't know, maybe not wish, but like, um, I, 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 I kind of want to see it more like naturally come up if that, if possible, I guess, because uh, there's some traits, definitely, as I mentioned before, some traits are like harder to get me out than others. But I've noticed that like, if you have a certain trait and then you interact with an object, then, uh, she actually says different things sometimes. She has like different dialogue options, which is pretty cool, but you don't really see that very often because a lot of the traits you get after like certain events anyway so it happened you, like it's, it's very easily uh missable basically um so i guess if you're like a like a completionist you wouldn't see all the different uh, little like differences anyway but eh, i mean i guess it's fine i mean i mean speaking to the writing you know just to like again provide a little bit of feedback there is a bit of typos but i mean obviously that's typos are typos right not much you can do about it is just to fix them i guess i, I imagine i because i think this game was in a game jam so you know, whenever you have to finish something like in a particular timeline, I've noticed you know, a lot of indie games in particular, they don't prioritize uh, typos because they rather just release the game, you know, in working condition, which I guess is fair. But, you know, there's some typos here and there, as usual. I always I usually say that for a lot of indie games, actually. Um, there's some typos. I mean, what else can I say about that? It's just it's just it's just there. Otherwise, not too bad, though. Um, the flow of the writing is good. Um, yeah, I mean it's just a interesting little story i like it. i love the mystery as well you know the 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 um the uh the main twist i guess the light keeper you know not being like as villainous as you thought she was a little cheesy though i would say you know she reminds you who's that person like there's a villain in one of the resident evil games or whatever one of the recent ones was it resident evil 7 i want to say i don't know i don't really keep up with all the resident evil games um there's that meme you know or not really a meme, but like there's a character that's very popular. It's like a really tall lady. <laughs> that's what she reminds me of. She's the villain is like tall lady. But as it turns out, she's not as like, again, not as uh, evil as you thought she was. At least the way the game interprets it. I do feel like she does do a little bit of murder though. Does she, doesn't she like do a little bit of murder? Does she like kill a bunch of innocent people? I don't know if the game expands on that. I guess we just sweep that under the rug, by the way, because she's our girlfriend or whatever or the you know the character's girlfriend so like whatever who cares just just smoosh her doesn't matter even though it does seem like she does cause a war and everything and like that does cause like millions to die I maybe mean, not millions but like at least you know there's some kind of fighting and violence and it does you know it's not exactly like she's like pure you know it's just like there is some like bloodshed going on in the background that we don't really like um focus on you know but oh well whatever they just kiss i guess we just ignore that i don't know i always do feel like there's a bit of disconnect there you know it's like this is cheesy romance but also a bunch of people die oh well you know see like, i feel like if there is a bit of you know i, I feel like there should be some, some acknowledgement of that you know um that it is a little bit like selfish you know a little bit like um how do you say ethically questionable but like you know acknowledge it but accept it you know it's like it's not like it's a bad thing it's just it makes the characters more complicated they, they justify their actions even though their actions do cause suffering to others it's like you know that makes interesting characters right i do, I do like that aspect it's just the game doesn't really expand on that it just makes it like cheesy romance at the end <laughs> you know it's like yeah, and then i don't know it's funny that they do that but yeah whatever again maybe the developer didn't really want to focus on that and also like limited time skills right right it's like you you want to go into the, all of that you know if you de if you deconstruct any kind of story you know you can you can always like make anything seem like you know weird and like uh psychopathic but anyway um anyway i feel like i'm rambling for too long though uh i think uh there you go so that's that's the game that's light keeper pretty good game i liked it um and I guess uh, I guess this is where I'll do my usual sign off. You know, technically I'm not done the stream, but like I'll just do the sign off when I when I make this into a video. So if you're watching the video, and if you want to like watch like the whole thing without any any like edits or whatever, then you could do so by looking up the vods on my YouTube channel. They're under the playlist live stream vods you can also catch me live by subscribing and changing the bell notifications from personalized to all you can also check out my other playthroughs as well again like games from this uh developer as well as other you know games as well 
and I guess you can also follow me on Twitch. I'm technically also restreaming it on Twitch as well, so you can follow me there too. And uh, I guess that's it, right? So uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then. <laughs>